And now chapter 33, Activities of Kapila. Sri Maitreya said, Thus Devahuti, the mother of Lord Kapila and wife of Kardama Muni, became freed from all ignorance concerning devotional service and transcendental knowledge. She offered her obeisances unto the Lord, the author of the basic principles of the Sankhya system of philosophy, which is the background of liberation. And she satisfied him with the following verses of prayer. Devahuti said, Brahma is said to be unborn because he takes birth from the lotus flower which grows from your abdomen while you lie in the ocean at the bottom of the universe. But even Brahma simply meditated upon you whose body is the source of unlimited universes. My dear Lord, although personally you have nothing to do, you have distributed your energies in the interactions of the material modes of nature. And for that reason, the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation take place. My dear Lord, you are self-determined and are the Supreme Personality of Godhead for all living entities. For them, you created this material manifestation. And although you are one, your diverse energies can act multifariously. This is inconceivable to us. As the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you have taken birth from my abdomen. O oh my Lord, how is that possible for the Supreme One, who has in his belly all the cosmic manifestation? The answer is that it is possible, for at the end of the millennium, you lie down on a leaf of a bunyan tree, and just like a small baby, you lick the toe of your lotus foot. My dear Lord, you have assumed this body in order to diminish the sinful activities of the fallen and to enrich their knowledge in devotion and liberation. Since these sinful people are dependent on your direction, by your own will you assume incarnations as a boar and as other forms. Similarly, you have appeared in order to distribute transcendental knowledge to your dependents. To say nothing of the spiritual advancement of persons who see the Supreme Person face to face, even a person born in a family of dog-eaters immediately becomes eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices if he once utters the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or chants about him, hears about his pastimes, offers him obeisances, or even remembers him. Oh, how glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if born in the families of dog-eaters, such persons are worshipable. Persons who chant the holy name of your lordship must have executed all kinds of austerities and fire sacrifices and achieved all the good manners of the Aryans. To be chanting the holy name of your lordship, they must have bathed at holy places of pilgrimage studied the Vedas, and fulfilled everything required. I believe, my Lord, that you are Lord Vishnu himself under the name of Kapila, and you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Brahman. The saints and sages, being freed from all the disturbances of the senses and mind, meditate upon you, for by your mercy only can one become free from the clutches of the three modes of material nature. At the time of dissolution, all the Vedas are sustained in you only.
Maitreya said, Thus the Supreme Personality of Godhead Kapila, satisfied by the words of his mother, towards whom he was very affectionate, replied with gravity. The Personality of Godhead said, My dear mother, the path of self-realization which I have already instructed to you is very easy. You can execute this system without difficulty, and by following it, you shall very soon be liberated, even within your present body. My dear mother, those who are actually transcendentalists certainly follow my instructions as I have given them to you. You may rest assured that if you traverse this path of self-realization perfectly, surely you shall be freed from fearful material contamination and shall ultimately reach me. Mother, persons who are not conversant with this method of devotional service certainly cannot get out of the cycle of birth and death. Sri Maitreya said, The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kapila, after instructing his beloved mother, took permission from her and left his home, his mission having been fulfilled. As instructed by her son, Devahuti also began to practice bhakti yoga in that very ashram. She practiced samadhi in the house of Kardamamuni, which was so beautifully decorated with flowers that it was considered the flower crown of the river Sarasvati. She began to bathe three times daily, and thus her curling black hair gradually became gray. Due to austerity, her body gradually became thin, and she wore old garments. The home and household paraphernalia of Kardama, who was one of the Prajapatis, was developed in such a way by dint of his mystic powers of austerity and yoga that his opulence was sometimes envied by those who travel in outer space in airplanes. The opulence of the household of Kardama Muni is described herein. The bedsheets and mattresses were all as white as the foam of milk. The chairs and benches were made of ivory and were covered by cloths of lace with golden filigree and the couches were made of gold and had very soft pillows. The walls of the house were made of first-class marble, decorated with valuable jewels. There was no need of light, for the household was illuminated by the rays of these jewels. The female members of the household were all amply decorated with jewelry. The compound of the main household was surrounded by beautiful gardens with sweet, fragrant flowers and many trees which produced fresh fruit and were tall and beautiful. The attraction of such gardens was that singing birds would sit on the trees and their chanting voices, as well as the humming sound of the bees, made the whole atmosphere as pleasing as possible. When Devahuti would enter that lovely garden to take her bath in the pond filled with lotus flowers, the associates of the denizens of heaven, the Gandharvas, would sing about Kardama's glorious household life. Her great husband, Kardama, gave her all protection at all times. Although her position was unique from all points of view, saintly Devahuti, in spite of all her possessions, which were envied even by the ladies of the heavenly planets, gave up all such comforts. She was only sorry that her great son was separated from her. Devahuti's husband had already left home and accepted the renounced order of life, and then her only son, Kapila, left home. Although she knew all the truths of life and death, and although her heart was cleansed of all dirt, she was aggrieved at the loss of her son, just as a cow is affected when her calf dies. O Vidura, 
thus always meditating upon her son, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kapila Deva, she very soon became unattached to her nicely decorated home. Thereafter, having heard with great eagerness and in all detail from her son, Kapila Dev, the eternally smiling personality of Godhead, Devahuti began to meditate constantly upon the Vishnu form of the Supreme Lord. She did so with serious engagement in devotional service. Because she was strong in renunciation, she accepted only the necessities of the body. She became situated in knowledge due to realization of the absolute truth. Her heart became purified. She became fully absorbed in meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and all misgivings due to the modes of material nature disappeared. Her mind became completely engaged in the Supreme Lord, and she automatically realized the knowledge of the impersonal Brahman. As a Brahman-realized soul, she was freed from the designations of the materialistic concept of life. Thus all material pangs disappeared, and she attained transcendental bliss. Situated in eternal trance, and freed from illusion, impelled by the modes of material nature, she forgot her material body, just as one forgets his different bodies in a dream. Her body was being taken care of by the spiritual damsels created by her husband, Kardama. And since she had no mental anxieties at that time, her body did not become thin. She appeared just like a fire surrounded by smoke. Because she was always absorbed in the thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, she was not aware that her hair was sometimes loosened or her garments were disarrayed. My dear Vadura, by following the principles instructed by Kapila, Devahuti soon became liberated from material bondage, and she achieved the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Super Soul without difficulty. The palace where Devahuti achieved her perfection, my dear Vadura, is understood to be a most sacred spot. It is known all over the three worlds as Siddhapad. Dear Vadura, the material elements of her body have melted into water and are now a flowing river, which is the most sacred of all rivers. Anyone who bathes in that river also attains perfection, and therefore all persons who desire perfection go and bathe there. My dear Vadura, the great sage Kapila, the personality of Godhead, left his father's hermitage with the permission of his mother and went towards the northeast. While he was passing in the northern direction, all the celestial denizens known as Charanas and Gandharvas, as well as the Munis and the damsels of the heavenly planets, prayed and offered him all respects. The ocean offered him oblations and a place of residence. Even now Kapila Muni is staying there in trance for the deliverance of the conditioned souls in the three worlds, and all the Acharyas or great teachers of the system of Sankhya philosophy are worshipping him. My dear son, since you have inquired for me, I have answered. O sinless one, the descriptions of Kapila Dev and his mother and their activities are the purest of all pure discourses. The description of the dealings of Kapila Dev and his mother is very confidential, and anyone who hears or reads this narration becomes a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is carried by Garuda, and he thereafter enters into the abode of the Supreme Lord to engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord.
Thus ends the 33rd chapter of the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Activities of Kapila. And this ends the third canto.